Hello, we're going to look at dynamic NMR. And really, the NMR isn't dynamic. This is the NMR spectra of molecules in equilibrium processes. So this could be conformational changes, proton transfers, ligand exchanges, um, something that's happening. And it's in the time scale in which the NMR can observe that happening. Um, so what you will often see if things are slowly interacting, it's a slow change of protons or um, a ligand is binding and unbinding very slowly, you'll see two different peaks because you'll have a maybe 75% of your molecule will be in one conformation and the other 25% will be in the other conformation the whole time that you are taking that spectrum. But maybe it's happening while the, inner, the reaction is happening on the time scale that you would observe it. And so you might get them kind of blobbing together. But if it's happening so fast, then it just shows up as one peak that's kind of averaged. So if we were to look at the Larmor frequency, uh, the in between, you'll see that these become the, in the same place. So if it's happening very fast, you get one peak. If it's happening very slow, you see them as two separate compounds. And if it's somewhere in between, you kind of get them blobbing. You see like a blur of them interchanging. So one of these things that you can see is proton exchange and alcohols. So if for one reason, somehow or another, you've labeled these or you can see it, um, at room temperature, this isn't happening very quickly. So you'll see the OH here and you will see the singlet peak here. However, as you get colder, they start to spread out further because these are exchanging, sorry. Did I say they were, ex these are exchanging. The protons are exchanging too quickly and so as you get colder, the reaction doesn't happen as easily and the slow down and you start to see the coupling that's there because it's not a big blob anymore. And they spread further out as distinct peaks and it, by minus 70, you have a beautiful quartet and a beautiful doublet. And up here you had a singlet and a blob. So cold temperature, you see two separate peaks. At room temperature, when it's warmer, you get um, blobs and you don't see the coupling as well. Another case where you see this is our amide. This is very classic, the dimethyl form amide. Oh, sorry, this is acetamide because it's got the methyl. And what we know is that there are two possible structures here. This proton uh, one on this methyl and this you would expect fast rotation around here and that these would show up as one peak. But um, because of that resonance structure, this is actually pretty slow rotation around that bond. And so this methyl one happens to be closer to the oxygen and methyl two is trans to the oxygen. So this one says, and they don't really rotate because there's not free rotation around that pi bond. So at room temperature, you see that there is some exchange here and these are rotating. But as you get this colder, it's less and less able to get around that partial pi bond and you see two distinct methyl groups. So that's a very classic example. Um, and so you can do this just like we've seen before. I can convert this spectrum into a 2D NMR spectrum. And I will see, um, this is my diagonal. And I see the off diagonal for things that are interchanging. So those two methyl groups are interchanging slowly around this bond, depending on the temperature. And I see this off resonance peak. So that tells me these two are interconverting. 
one, the methyl in one position rotates around occasionally, and sometimes the two is up here next to the oxygen, cis to the oxygen. So the thing to be aware of with XE, um, which is exchange spectroscopy, is this is the same pulse sequence as NOE. So you have to be careful that you're getting a true exchange and not a through space interaction from NOE. Okay, one last technique that I want to talk about. It's a saturation transfer difference NMR. And you've also seen saturation uh, transfer before. That was uh, in some of these coupling, when you hit a peak and wait for it to transfer the polarization to another nuclei like in depth. So what we have here is I've got some sort of receptor or enzyme here in green, and I have two possible ligands, this kind of roundish uh, teal and a burnt orange, uh, more egg-shaped one. Some of these are bound and some of them don't bind. And so you can see in here, I've got the red bound. And I, so the ones that are bad, they have slightly different shifts then. Um, uh, they're related compounds. So what we can see is if I irradiate the protein, but not the ligands, the peaks that are bound, the orange here, to that green protein will absorb some of that energy. It'll the protein will transfer that energy over to the ligand that it's bound to, but not to the others. So the, you see the orangish ones go up because they uh, got some of that energy and the peaks increased. So this is a lot like NOE, where we saw the peaks increase when we irradiated another one nearby. So then I can take this spectrum and subtract this one. The bluish teal ones did nothing, so they will completely disappear. And I will see only the spectrum of the compound that is bound to the macromolecule. So this is called saturation transfer difference NMR because the computer will subtract the two spectra for you before and after the irradiation. And it's a nice quick way to tell you whether something is bound into a receptor. So there's a, a variety of examples of dynamic exchanges, proton transfers and so on in, that you should explore. Um, but these are some of the key things, XC, You'll see the proton transfers, you'll see rotations, and then the saturation difference, NMR. So some pretty ex interesting applications of NMR.